tell, if the Cleveland Browns were to tell, were to draft you number one overall, what's your message to the fan base to let them know that they have found the quarterback in their future? Um, you know, you're gonna get everything from me, and um, you know, I'm not scared of you know the the, the Browns curse or whatever they call it. Where I, I don't even want to go into that. So <laughs> I just say that I'm ready to to go anywhere. I'm ready to you know step in and do whatever I need to do to help the team be successful. Well, Josh, 28 quarterbacks since 1999 have started for him. Why isn't that daunting to you? You know, because I, I definitely think they're in the right situation now. I think, like I said, their head coach is doing the right things. Uh, their GM is you know, notorious for helping turn around programs. So they got the youngest team, like I said, in the NFL the other day. Uh, a lot of cap space. You know, they got a lot of high picks that's going to allow their team to remain young and to learn from these guys that are you know, developing throughout their years in the NFL. So. Um, I definitely think it's a, it's a different situation than it has been in the past few years. Josh, you said you graduated early. How did you go about that process and what was your major? As social science, so I got my degree. I understood that in order to play in this game, I needed to get my degree, so I fulfilled all the re those requirements and uh, you know, just kind of fast-tracked it, took a few more uh, credits this past semester and in the summer to This help past semester when you were playing? Yes, yes, sir. How many credits did you take this past semester? Fifteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. You work in the summer, that sort yep. of stuff, too? Yes, sir. So how long had you thought about that ahead of time? It had been in the works, you know, prior to the season. I understand. I understood that, you know, coming from Wyoming, I think people wanted to see me play against some, some, uh, you know, quote unquote better competition here at the Senior Bowl. So allowing myself to have that opportunity is uh, going to be big for me. When you meet with, you know, Hugh Jackson here and probably John Dorsey and those guys, I'm assuming that you probably will sit down with them here. Uh, when you do that, will you make sure that they walk away from here thinking he's got to be in consideration for us at number one overall? Yeah, that's my goal for every team. Every team that I meet with, whether they have a quarterback or not, I want to make sure that you know I walk away and be like, well, you know, that, that's that could be our guy, that should be our guy, and um, you know, as long as I can do that with uh, most teams I meet with, um, you know, I think I come out of here as, as a success. Seems like a really good coach, and I understand that. You know, after this past season, I, um, you know, their players were really adamant on keeping him, and I can see why. He just seems like a real players coach. You know, he's got a deeper voice than I thought he would. You know, <laughs> seeing him on the sound, he's got a really deep voice. But you know, I'm excited to play under him. I, he's a very intense, intense coach, and you know, that's the, the kind of coaches that I like. So being able to, you know. Uh, be around him for the next four or five days is going to be fun. I remember Joshua. watching Carson Wentz here a couple of years ago just because of the offense that he played in. He already had the footwork down. He already had the drop backs. He just looked almost like a pro-style type of quarterback. Do you think that you will bring that to the table when you get out there and start practicing? Yeah, I think it's going to be very, fairly similar. Uh, you know, We did a lot of you know, pro-style drop backs at Wyoming, so I was fortunate enough to be in a pro-style system there. And you know, hopefully when we're transitioning into practice, you know, people are going to see that. Josh, what's a skill set or trait that you want to show this week out on the practice field that you think people might be questioning or wondering about you? Uh, the accuracy, of course, and being able to put the ball where it needs to be put at you know any given time. So going out there and making sure my, my stride's right and my uh, you know, sequencing is all in pattern and you know delivering a, a good catch of the ball. Josh, um, when you've had criticisms of the game throughout the year, maybe some of the performance of the team, how have you been able to handle that and kind of turn those negatives into positives? That's the kind of the, the thing that we, we wanted to do at Wyoming. We obviously didn't start uh, to a, a great season. We were one and two at one point, and you know we were two and two the previous year. And you know I called a team meeting and just called you know, everybody up and said we're not going to allow this to happen. We reeled off five straight at one point, and uh, you know we finished the season strong. So I was extremely proud of those guys. And um, you know football is a team effort, so you know bringing everybody together and trying to push for one one common goal is what it's all about. Hey Josh, uh, you, you talked earlier about getting no offers coming out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, the path that you had to take, how, is that sh how did that shape you? And you know, it just shows you know how much I love football. Uh, I could have easily given up my dream, but you know, I decided to go to the junior college route because you know, my dream was always to play collegiate football. And you know, I got my opportunity at Reedley College, started you know, six or seven games there, and uh, ultimately had one offer from the University of Wyoming. You know, be forever grateful and forever in debt to those coaches for allowing me to have that opportunity. And how, 
do you remember when you first dreamed of becoming an NFL quarterback? No, since I was a kid. You know, I, this is the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And uh, you, know, I, you can ask my dad. I sat around and made him throw the football to me in our living room while he was watching Monday Night Football every every week. So uh, this is the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And you, I heard you say yesterday that you had a. You, had the football in bed when you were a kid. Oh, yeah, I slept. It was like a stuffed animal? Or? Basically, yeah. 49ers football, I slept with it. And, you know, I couldn't sleep without it. My dad would have to go find it for me when I was a little kid so I can sleep. What's the farthest you've thrown a football in practice than in a game? Um, in practice, I think I've gotten it to 82 yards one time. Uh, in the game, I don't know if I've ever really pushed it that far. Probably 60, 65 in the air. Now, or you made it in Nebraska, maybe it was right before half, but mm -hmm. is, is, is there throws that jump to you that you're your favorite over the last couple of years? I mean, that I, one in Nebraska was an amazing throw, obviously, the NFL throw. Are there ones that you said, you know what, this is, shows me I, I can do this at the next level? My favorite throw was Utah State. Uh, they brought a cap pressure. And I set the protection the wrong way, and <laughs> our back didn't get there, but he came in. I kind of evaded him, and I was rolling to my left. We were on the 40-yard line, and I threw it rolling to my left at Tanner Gentry. It was you know, a combination of the, the, the throw and the catch because he dove and laid out and caught it right right at the edge of the uh, sideline. So that's probably one of my favorite plays I've ever Josh, uh, kind of experienced. Josh, as, as a young guy, how do you leave grown men? How do you guys who've got wives, kids? I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, it's going to be a learning process, and like I said, you know, jumping in this thing, it's it's not going to be perfect. And every day, you know, you're going to have to learn. And uh, you know, I'm going to rely on those around me and rely on the, the, the team leaders on the team already and be able to talk with them. And because you know, being the quarterback, you, you've got to take a leadership role. And I understand that. So uh, it's just going to be learning. Two things, real quick. Your your hand measurement. Were you happy with the way that came out today? And do you think that that will serve you well as teams see that ten and an eight? Uh, I, I would hope so. I, I don't know. You know the answer to that question. Yeah. Over 10 inches, right? Yeah, 10 and an eighth, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, do you feel like, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's actually a big, that's actually a big, it's a big hand? That's a selling, okay. I feel like that's a good selling point for you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay, then the other, the other, the other part about that is, uh, with Todd Haley coming here from Pittsburgh, do you think he'll see some similarities to you and Ben Roethlisberger? Um, I mean, I would hope so. I think Ben Ben's one of the, you know, obviously one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL and one of the best quarterbacks to play the game. You know, he's got a lot of physical attributes that help him along, but you know, he's super sharp mentally. And you know, if Todd Haley sees some of that in me, um, you know, I'm fine with that because you know I look up a lot to Ben Roethlisberger. What do you know about Josh Gordon? He would be the ultimate deep threat for you if you were drafted by the Browns. Uh, what do you think about him and how that would team up with him? From what I've heard, he's a monster. And I've never seen him in person, but I've heard actually seeing him in person just kind of uh, it kind of blows your mind to see how big and fast the dude can actually move. Have you talked to any? Um, you know, he's obviously the Heisman Trophy winner. I've never met him, so. You know, I've heard from a lot of people he's a really good guy. His teammates admire him a lot. They respect him a lot. So, you know, being on the same team, uh, I'm sure all the guys here are gonna gonna like him, and uh, I'm just looking forward to meeting him. Josh, do you quarterbacks? Do you think you can learn some things from him? Maybe, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can learn from everybody you're, you're playing with or against, and you know, hopefully we can come out and compete and push each other this this next you know four or five days. Josh, do you have a, an appreciation for? Um, how tough of a, a quarterback town Cleveland is. I mean, I, I hear a lot of questions about New York, and I understand it's New York. This concludes but, but, session but Cleveland, uh, you know, they've got some rabid fans. I'm sure you saw the parade on TV. They, they're very session vocal. Session one is over. Um, session two do you have an appreciation for that fan base? And what? I do. I, I love their fan base. Obviously, it's it's hard to be a Cleveland Brown fan that hasn't helped and hasn't paid off in the past, you know, four or five years. But... I definitely think that they've got the, the most loyal fan base out there, and uh, you know that kind of shows their their spirit throwing a parade for 0-16. I know they want to win, and you know hopefully soon you know, that, that changes.